What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my guys, Kenny Heider and Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through the Masters. Uh, we did a little preview video, Sheets and I, already on Tuesday. And uh, now I guess we're, we're coming in with final thoughts here, guys. And I'm pretty excited about the Masters. Uh, Kenny, got, great to have you. And uh, let us know sort of like any initial thoughts before we start jumping into tears and sheets. If you don't mind, I, I'm happy to share my screen if you don't want to. But uh, Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, let me uh, let me get my stuff ready. And then Kenny, talk a little bit about this, about this uh, slate and what your thoughts are. Well, uh, exciting week. I've got my master's hat. I've got my master's cup. Nice. So I'm here for it. Um, so this week, obviously, um, you know, biggest week of the year and, um, you know, there's a lot of interesting analysis out there that I've heard. I've been listening to a lot of stuff more than usual this week. And it seems like everyone's kind of on the same page. Um, for me, you know, the top of the slate is very heavy and probably need to have some sort of exposure to almost everyone uh, except for maybe a couple in my opinion if you're you know doing large entries um and you know really the focus i think is going to be uh trying to pinpoint a couple of really low cost guys so that you can get in all of the people that actually have like a great chance at winning this week because there's so many of them um you know up, up above 8k or so hey what's awesome i, I really love doing the doing the shows with kenny because it's like we don't, we don't talk about this in advance. And it's like amazing how like every single week we're completely opposite. I mean, it's literally <laughs> just almost uncanny that, that, that well, I was about to say that pretty much everybody over 10K you could just throw out. <laughs> so, so it's so and, and so the good news is, is that, like I said, somebody's going to win. <laughs> uh, well, I don't I, I agree more with that than, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking more, you know, above 8500 so all the oh, 9k okay, guys okay, you know okay. that's i i really don't want to miss out on a whole lot going on right, there so right 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 yep. well I, the other thing i will tell you by the way is i did um i did outright bets this week um and i'd love to get your opinion on the outright market also i don't know if you ever do that uh kenny um i've a couple times it's harder in california but oh yeah, I'll, I'll put it in for you. I, I didn't mean to say that. Sorry. I, 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 I'm already in enough trouble listen, with them. Don't listen. Don't listen, drafting. I don't know. Yeah, maybe from St. Martin, they could they could accuse me of being in two places at one time again. Um, and I actually did it live on the on the live stream the other night after Bobby left. I literally put all my bets in with everybody watching. So, so that was fun. So what are your outrights? All right. So yeah, I have one from that. like from from every tier. I have it, my, my chalk, I have 25 to one Cantlay, okay? And then I got 180 to one Matt Wolf. I wow. have, I have like, like literally no chance to win Sanjay M. I have, um, <laughs> I have, I have, I have Say Goodnight Raquel. I got Neiman at like, at like whatever his price is. Goodnight Raquel. And I think, do I not even remember? Who the other one was? I think did I, I? I have to go double check. I may have done the Ryan Palmer at a million to one, um, but hold on, I'm going to go check this because, I, oh, Sam Burns. That's right. I did. I did. I did Sam Burns also. Oh, nice. Uh, I love the Sam Burns. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought he had the the Sun J M was a straight value play, like just based on where I had him versus what. Um, actually, there were three guys that were ranked kind of like I just had ranked higher than their odds were, pretty much. And then what I did was I, I let, um, I gave, a, I gave the, the, uh, the discord a choice between three random numbers and they picked it. You know, so I ended up, <laughs> oh, with, nice. oh, and here's the other <laughs> million one. So I have Cantley, M, Wolf, Neiman, and Gary Woodland. Oh, I like the Gary Woodland call too. Yeah. I also like Can the Cantley call. I, I, I have a really hard time with, <laughs> with the Wolf one. Uh, I know Bobby likes him all the time, but uh especially considering he's got a pretty late uh, tea time on Friday where the wind's going to be real harsh. Uh, that's going to be difficult, especially with his <laughs> whack ass swing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the, the tiers. Um, I've, I mean, look, Wolf, I'm just saying at 6,500 at zero ownership, I'll take a chance on that, but that's, you know, I, I don't necessarily expect him to win these, this tournament. Obviously. I just think that, uh, 
you're getting some some value from a guy who, you know, in, in my opinion, in five years is going to be one of the best 40 golfers, 30 golfers in the world. And now is being treated as the 110th or whatever. Anyway, um, that's the only reason I say for both this week. But let's start with the 10K range. Um, Kenny, I'm going to let you start out because we know Sheets just made his uh, his point very clear. He doesn't want to play anybody above 10K. I know he's going to play some guys above 10K. I do. I, I, I have my builds all set and I'll tell you guys what I have. All right. Tell us what you got. So then we'll go to, then we'll go to Kenny after. So I, I do have some Justin Thomas. Um, I'm not getting anybody else over 10K, but I am getting the Justin Thomas. I'm not getting literally anybody else. No Rom, no McElroy, I don't think. No Scheffler, no Hovland. I, I, I very, very, very little. But what's interesting is that when we get, we get to this other range, and this is kind of cool when you play you know, GPPs because I, I did go 150 this week. I have like a, I have some high ownership in guys that don't rate all that well, but I think that when you, when you, when you play GPPs and you play to win, um, you, you, you won't be surprised at who I have a lot of. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I definitely get the idea of the, the, un, the under 10 K bill. There's a lot of guys who win this tournament below that. I don't necessarily agree that that's the optimal way to go. I think that you want to mix these guys in and then build a core around the other guys. That's just what I'm doing. But that's yeah. my, I'm not saying it's optimal. I'm just saying that's that's the way that I found the lineups that I like the best this week. Kenny, what do you like in the 10K plus range the most? So I definitely understand the JT play this week, um, especially with, you know, him getting bones on the bag and everything. Uh, big narrative there. He's been gearing up. He's been playing well. I just have a really hard time with the ownership on him, um, yep. <clears throat> especially in larger builds. I'll probably Absolutely. try to isolate him more to single entries and smaller field tournaments um, for that reason specifically. And, um, you know, other than that, my, you know, I'm, I'm going to not be uh, neglecting Rom at all. And I know Bobby, you and I are on stage there with yep. John Rom. He's just, you know, there's no, <laughs> Last uh, four times he played this, he got fifth, seventh, ninth, and fourth. So, um, and is, that good? Is, that, is, that good, is that good enough? Absolutely. It's more than good enough. Everybody says this all the time. The guys who you're spending up for do not need to win the tournament. It's a huge misconception okay. unless you have like a 2K price guy, okay. in my opinion. And only 100 golfers? And only, there was only 100 golfers. That's actually more of an argument why you should be doing it, in my opinion, right? Like, okay. you're, still, you're still, I mean, but by the way, it's not like he's guaranteed to finish in the same exact spot. He's a better golfer than he was for at least three of those years. Maybe not. All right, well, I'm just saying. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. And, all, and then also I will be back uh, again on Scheffler this week. I don't care that he's the most expensive. Um, I don't care that he, you know, so, so it's an interesting week in that this week, there are four golfers that all won the last tournament they played. Uh, and Scheffler's one of them. Uh, he won the WGC, and he's had some time off uh, to practice this week. Um, I expect him to do phenomenally well, uh, especially considering um, the weather. I think the weather is going to play a factor this week, especially on Friday, as it gets late on Friday. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to be a really interesting scenario because late pickup Friday weather, you know, has the biggest impact on a cut line. Right. I mean, I know we're in a we have a, a higher percentage of the field making the cut this week, so it's not as drastic. But if the afternoon golfers all start shooting over par, that can move the cut line, that could change things, that could change right. um, a lot of standings going into the weekend. And uh, when you look at the guys who play late on Friday, um, you know, a lot of the big names are out there. JT is, uh, you know, one in one of the very last groups. Neiman, who I also like this week, is in one of the last groups. Uh, Cam Smith, who's arguably maybe my favorite golfer on the slate, is in uh, a late group. And with Scheffler, he's also he's in the second to last group on Friday. But we watched him do it at the WGC. He hits those low stingers. The wind is not a problem. He can take that out of play and still play phenomenally well. Uh, and he's got the distance off the tee, and he doesn't even need the accuracy. He just has the distance. And he's, his approach play is great. His around the green game has been, you know, one of the best in the field. So I'll be spending up for Scheffler uh, plenty, especially considering he's, you know, the lowest projected ownership in the 10K range. Yeah, it is, it is it's pretty interesting. I, I do think Scheffler and Morikawa end up as the lowest two owned. Um, it's very strange because I this recent form thing, I think, has gotten too carried away when it comes to Morikawa. Um, 
this uh, this is what I keep coming back to. And I, I'm just like, my natural instinct is if I'm going to play guys in the 10K range, I want to play Rom, DJ, and JT. And that was like my nat- my first thought. I want to try and get combinations of those two of those. And it's very pretty easy to do with some of the guys you can spend down on this week if yeah. you wanted to go that route. Or I could avoid all of them. But I keep going back to this thing with Morikawa about it's just perception. He has not looked good. He has not looked like himself. But I, or I think we're overrating it a little bit for him. And we've seen this before with him. He struggled, I believe, I think this might have been last, but it was before last year's Masters. I don't know if it was the Masters, but I can't remember what tournament it was. And then he ended up going out and finishing third and then winning, getting a win like the next, you know, there's a week or two later. I don't know. I just feel like this course is like made for him. <laughs> like, and I just think he's being a little bit too overlooked. So I'm going to let ownership, you know, overweight some of my, my love for JT and some of my love for DJ and Rom and, and try and get more and more cow shares is what I've sort of come to later in the day. I uh, am definitely afraid not to have some Rory. And I understand the people who do. I'm definitely afraid, a little bit afraid not to have some Scheffler and afraid not to have any Hovland. Um, I can make a similar argument for Hovland versus Morikawa, but uh, maybe not about the course, but about just in general. But I really like the the Morikawa, JT, DJ, Rom. But I think I'm going to start siding a little bit more with Morikawa just because of the ownership factor. That's what I've sort of come to. You know, and then, you know, I'm not going to make the same mistake as when we made the uh, the earlier video, just forgetting about this guy. But, you know, I, I'm not really getting too much of him. But again, I would be remiss to not point out, even though, like you say, short term form is might be exaggerated. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to repeat now what I said at the end of the last show. The two sharpest golfers playing the best right now are Scotty Scheffler and Dustin Johnson. OK. And if Dustin Johnson goes off 5% owned or something like that, um, I, I think you're going to want to have that. Yeah. Um, he's not, uh, I, I just, I would just, I would just point that out. Can I, can I, can we, can we throw like a little, a little nod to Cam Smith for winning two out of the last four tournaments he played and coming in top five, top four and three out of the five. Like, no, this good too. no you don't get to cut him <laughs> even coming off the win. Uh, okay. We won't count Cam Smith then, but I do. I, I would say that uh, you got, yeah, I understand. I agree with you that DJ, DJ and, uh, I mean, they have looked the best lately, obviously. All right, let's get into the 9K range. She'd start us off, and then we'll go over to Kenny. Who, um, I mean, you have, you have to be loaded up in this range, right, if you're a little bit lower on the top 10K, right? Yeah, so my highest-owned golfer on the slate this week at 31% is the anti-sharp form golfer, and that would be Bryson DeChambeau. Um, wow. Yeah. In my 150, wow. I have 31% um, Bryson DeChambeau, and I don't have him in my big buy. <laughs> That's that that because I just can't play that guy in my big buy. I just I just can't do it. I just have much better plays that I feel a little more, you know, a little more solid with. But when I when I run Sabres and I run simulations, whatever, it's going to give you like these high upside results. And and if you get that if you get that performance out of DeChambeau, who can hit the ball really far on a course that rewards it, um, you're just going to kind of want it. So I do like that. But the two real solid, the three real solid plays in this range are going to be, I would imagine, popular, but Cantlay, Xander, and Berger. And, and especially if, if, and you can talk about Cam Smith. Yeah, I, don't, I don't rate Cam Smith as high as you guys do. But um, I have a, but, but Berger, like he's going to be also kind of immune to the wind um he keeps the ball really really low i don't know what his tee times are or whatever maybe maybe he doesn't get as much of a boost whatever it is but um if he goes in the morning but uh i like Cantlay, i like burger and um and uh and the guy i mentioned and and chocolate is the top nine teams okay what do you like because i i definitely the one i mean i think that the chalk in this range is definitely cam smith and, and brooks um Yep. And I, I like them both. <laughs> yeah. That, that's where I, and, and I like both of those guys as well. Kenny, what you do you guys like? The, you guys like the Kepka, huh? Yeah. And by the way, talk about good for, like, I mean, he's actually looked really, really good. Like, yeah. Did, he did has. He, go ahead. And, go ahead, Kay. And, and he also has the distance. Um, and he also is, uh, he has the best uh, record in the field uh, when it comes to majors. And we know he's a get up guy for majors. This is the biggest one. 
Um, he also got the bad to. draw at the players, which throws off his recent form because right. he True. had a beautiful day one and got the bad draw day two and shot like nine over. Although for somehow JT on the same, in the same, I think it was the group ahead of him, somehow didn't, he, he went bogey, bogey free that round. And I don't think anybody else had less than three or something. <laughs> yeah, he was the only person. Yeah, it was, yeah. that was a, just a fluke thing. I, Crazy, I mean, right? no, no discredit to JT, but you know, right, that right, was, right. That was just not expected, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, I will have some exposure there. I do love Cam Smith. Um, I think he has no problem top fiving. Uh, he's done it twice here already. Um, I also, uh, I agree with these sheets on Cantley. I, I, I really like Cantley. Um, he's kind of seemed to fallen into the shadows a bit this season. Uh, and he just, you know, he won the FedEx cup last year. And won all the money. I, know, I, I, I mean, he, you know, I, I know I have my qualms because I'm a, a a Rombo fan, but, um, you know, he played, he plays phenomenal golf. He also has, um, you know, great around the green game. He has distance off the tee. Uh, he has, you know, he's definitely one of the best putters, uh, even though people don't really talk about it that much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bobby and I've watched him make, you know, just That's ridiculous. 30 foot after 30 foot yeah. putt, like it's no big deal. You know what I mean? And I know the greens are very different here, but I think that, you know, skill set uh, is going to, is going to do really well for him. And he's, um, you know, he hasn't had the same or as good a record as the guys around him here historically, but, um, you know, he's top 20 a couple of times. Uh, he's, you know, been playing great lately and, and uh, especially with the ownership in the range, I think you're going to have to choose a couple of guys um, that are going to be projected lower ownership because you can't just play Cam Smith and Kepka together. Right. Know? Right. I, I agree. And that's why I'm, Look, as of right now, he's he's gonna he's expected to play the tournament. So I'm going to play. I'm, I don't care when people tell me that one guy is gonna be one twentieth as owned as everybody else. And by all accounts, I don't think Hideki is he, he might not even get one percent ownership. Uh, guys, remember who won this tournament last year? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but I think people are scared. You know, everyone's scared. They're afraid. Of I know. Gone, and, you and, know? Right. And and my, my thing is, they're all wrong to be doing that. If, they, if if when the ownership at some point the ownership catches up with the actual like. If he if he feels okay and goes out there, there's no way he should be one twentieth. The owner he shouldn't be half a percent versus Will Zalatoris is fifteen percent or something like that. There's just it shouldn't happen. Well, be playing. I understand being worried about the injury, but really it's an excuse to cut a golfer out, and that's what I think people are doing it for. I think they want they want to make their their thing a little bit thinner. All the probabilities, all the numbers are slanted against him now. The truth is he wasn't going to get much ownership anyway. But now it's like even more of an excuse. Okay, we can cross this guy out because we've got all these great golfers around him. So I will take the shot on that guy. Um, so it's not, it's not all that different than, than Bryce's thing, except for, you know, we've watched Bryce look absolutely God awful, but like, oh. if, if, if there's a guy, you know, if, if, if it would have come, would it surprise any of us if he goes out there and he's like, you know, four strokes better than everybody after the two rounds? No, of course no. not. So, and, and that's my thing with Hideki. The only thing difference is, is like Hideki doesn't really, like he, like he had a bad week last week because he was injured and, and messing around with some shots, but like, this guy hasn't had like a bad tournament. Like what is he? He's, t- he's top 30, t- top 40 or whatever. No, I'm sorry. He's made the cut in all but one tournament in his last two and a half years. He's been in the top 20 of half of those. Like, and he's, and honestly, he's got a pretty good win equity. He's got the, you know, the second most wins in the last two years. So I, I don't know. I, including winning this tournament. So I, I just think that at the ownership, I'm going to take that weird chance. I agree with all the other guys you guys like. The one guy who I'm not going to go for, who everyone and it's it's going to kill me if if he if he wins, I will probably end up with like one or two out of like 150 lineups with Jordan Spieth. But mostly, I'm just completely fading that, and I am going to fade mostly Zalatoris, which obviously makes me nervous because I love Zalatoris, and I will not be playing any Daniel Berger this week unless he somehow squeaks into one of my 150. But like no major tournaments do I have anything with Berger. That's that. Those are the guys I'm fading because that whole range is the, the, the all the ranges are loaded. So. I just thought it's better to talk about the guys who I'm, I'm way underweight on other than the Hideki who I'm way overweight on, which could be crazy, but I want to take these weird chances and we're going to have another chance for a guy like that in this next tier who. Well, I, before, we, before, we, before we go on, I mean, I, I wonder about, um, got about the ownership um, in general, because like when you say like Hideki's going to be really low owned, I mean, I just feel as though, no one's going to be really low on. But then again, like you said, I mean, people have to play somebody. And, and, and the thing about the Masters is that 
these salaries came out like two weeks ago, pretty much. Right. So people have been analyzing the crap out of this thing. Right. And and, and when the, the longer stuff like that goes, the more ownership is naturally going to concentrate, I guess. Um, right. So maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe, maybe guys do get, will get completely overlooked and you, then you'll get a guy like, you know, like Corey Connors or Fitzpatrick to like 30, 25% plus or something like that. That's what I think is going to happen, especially in the single entries and somewhat higher buy-ins. Um, but I mean, can you, I don't know. I just, it's hard for me to picture people playing Hideki and they have the justification of the, the potential injury. And that's a real thing. This is masters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if it was any other sport, if it was like a basketball tournament, the guy had like a, a, a broken leg, a broken ankle. If he was going to play, if it was the, if it was the NBA finals, I'm going to give that guy credit for being good to go. You know what I mean? LeBron could barely walk and he comes and he plays 40 minutes and he puts up 70 fantasy points. You know what I mean? That's except when, except, except when his team is on the verge of getting eliminated. He sat last night. Yeah. But he, I mean, that's, he's really injured. That's the problem. I'm just saying yeah. that if you, if you get a guy playing injured at the biggest event, I'm going to, I'm going to give like, if he shoots a good round one, I don't think it's going to bother him all that much. Anyway, um, back to the <sighs> range sheets. This is uh, completely loaded. I think I've heard a lot of people say this is the range where you're going to you're gonna find out that this is how you win the tournament is getting these guys right. Um, and unfortunately, because of the buzz, we were going to get Lolo and Tiger, and now we're not going to get that. So I'm going to have to pivot <laughs> off of my weird play. What happened? He's not, he's not playing? Oh, he's it. oh, no, he's good to go. He's just looked incredible, apparently. Everybody thinks he looks better and bigger and stronger, and some people have said better, like, in the, they watched him warm up. I don't know how real all of that is, but that's what we've been hearing. Um, so anyway, she'd go ahead with this range. What do you think? Well, I love Hatton, um, yeah. at 8K. I love Sam Burns at 8,600. I love Joaquin Neiman at 8,200. You'll see a theme here. These are guys I have outright bets on. <laughs> um, and then I like, um, Oosthausen at 8,900. I like, um, um, I think that and, and Shane Lowry at 8,800. I do like the 8K range a lot. Um, and then I'll even go down as, like I mentioned, like the Sun JM. I have him at 6% ownership. Like that's somebody. I mean, he's not going to win, but you don't need to win at 8,400, you know? Yeah. So uh, those are the guys I like. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, uh, and this is a loaded range, Kenny. What are you doing here? <clears throat> so. I, my favorite in the range is Sam Burns. Um, he's one of the other four guys that won the last tournament he played. He's um, got plenty of distance. He's a fantastic golfer. Uh, he's going to be a great. And um, I know that there's a huge uh, course history thing here and he's never played here, uh, but I don't care. And I, and I like that because I think that it actually is going to maybe take some ownership off of him um, because people are going to go to, to, you know, some of the guys like Adam Scott, uh, who I also like this week, who's played, you know, here plenty of times or, um, you know, Ustazen and, you know, these guys that have a lot of, uh, you know, decent record um, playing the masters. So my favorite in the range is by far and away, Sam Burns. Um, I also do like Sungjae uh, a bit here just because, of the ownership and because he also is you know he's he's kind of a, a silent killer when it comes to these big tournaments and you know he's um done really well in in studded events and uh i think he has you know what it takes to get there this week especially you know he's got great around the green um you know he's long enough off the tee and you know he he fares up well in general so i like him uh also I also do like Neiman a lot. Um, I'm just disappointed to see that his ownership is so high. Mm -hmm. um, and also knowing that he tees off late in the day on Friday when the wind's going to be real heavy, might be able to get me off of him a little bit more, but I'll still have some exposure to him, definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, again, it's, it, it sounds like a broken record. I, I like all the guys you mentioned. I, my priorities in this range are Neiman, Hatton. Um, let me just make sure I'm getting myself right. So I'll look at my lineups and other Neiman, Hatton, Burns, um, Adam Scott are the main guys I'm playing from this range this week. I do think a low-owned Louie and a low-owned Sungjae are definitely very interesting to me. Um, 
that's that's pretty much my range. I think a lot of people are getting onto this Finau thing because they were just so excited to see that he didn't have a shitty tournament for the first time in what feels like about a year. Um, what was that, last week? Yeah, right? Or was it the week before? Uh, no, it was last week. Um, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to go for that personally. Um, I was kind of intrigued early in the week if I thought when you know people were projecting him to be like three, four percent owned. I'm looking now; he's probably based on two different sites, uh, possibly as high as fifteen percent. That's just something I'll probably stay away from. Um, all right, uh, Kenny, why don't you start us off in the seven K range? Uh, obviously, not as big of a seven K range as we usually have because we have less golfers this week. So, who are you liking from this? Uh, stands out for you. So for me. Um... I kind of oddly like Russell Henley, who's the, you know, one of the big chocks in the, in the range here. Um, also Corey Connors, Corey Connors, I think, you know, probably would be a little bit easier for me to fade just because the ownership is projected pretty high here. Um, and I don't mind, uh, you know, going to Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick, um, you know, they both fare out pretty well, especially against the field and have good history here. Um, you know, I also like maybe a little bit of Paul Casey. Um, I'm a little worried about him, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of like, you have to pick and choose. I think you can't really have too many guys that are chalk in each range. You know what I mean? So my focus this week is trying to kind of, you know, decide which ranges I need to (laughs) get off the chalk on. And I think this is, you know, maybe one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll, uh, you know, maybe not be playing a whole ton of this range, actually. Um, maybe a little bit of, uh, Billy Horschel, just because I think that he's going to have, you know, I, 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 I've been, I'm betting on him this season. Mm -hmm. Um, also, um, I'll actually my, maybe one of my kind of sneaky plays that I like this week, uh, will be Seamus Power, who, actually has looks like he you know he's been in great form recently mm-hmm. um he you know his stats look to be good all across the board for this course even though he doesn't have any history here um so i'll, I'll probably be you know trying to get some of him in there uh to a, a larger degree as well nice um you know i'm just gonna throw this out there before i go to you sheets but i, I do want you know your guys but i just want to throw out like sheets do you find it or, or kenny first do you find it a little bit funny We've got some guys who have actually played well at this tournament before who are much cheaper than we're used to. I know they haven't been in great form, but, you know, and, and I love, I'm, look, I'm, I'm very high on Paul Casey. I'm going to be well overweight on him. But if we're not a little bit worried about him with, why are we worried about other guys like Webb Simpson and Justin Rose? You know what I'm saying? But we're not worried about Paul Casey, who's coming off of a withdrawal. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just, it's a, it, sometimes the numbers don't quite make sense to me. And he's, Casey's going to be really popular. They're going to be completely unknown, basically. Um, from what I'm looking at, you, is, is there any, are we maybe not giving them enough credit here? Um, and, and are we giving way too much to Corey Connors? Cause I think Corey Connors is going to be the highest owned player on this slate. And it seems like a little bit overreactive to me. And I like Corey Connors, you know, I'm a Corey Connors guy. Kenny, what are your thoughts just really quickly on that? And then we'll jump over to sheet. Yeah. I, you know, I, I actually agree with you. Um, the one thing that Corey Connors has going against him is he loses strokes to the field around the greens and mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there, there hasn't been a winner that lost strokes to the field around the greens uh, at the Masters. It just doesn't happen. Uh, it's a long course. The greens are difficult and, you know, people don't hit them all the time. So get, and they're hard to, hard to make the ball stop when you do get it on there. So um, I, you know, I, I like Justin Rose. Uh, he also just doesn't, he, you know, he has, he's been in pretty poor form lately. Um yeah, yeah, maybe he has a get up week because it's the Masters. Uh, you know, he top 10 last year. You know, he's definitely not out of the conversation. Um, and, you know, also potentially the same thing with Webb Simpson. I know he's, you know, he doesn't really have the distance off the tee, but his approach great game is great. His around the game, green game is get great. Sorry, I'm stumbling my words here. No, you're good. And, you know, he ranks out well just in general. So um, I actually uh, have some initial builds where I, I was kind of trying to target Webb Simpson, but um, I can't remember what it was. I, I, I think I just maybe got a little over focused on Jameis power mm-hmm. as being a little, little bit more sneaky um, and a little bit cheaper. So. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I hear you. I just sort of wanted to, you know, I, you know me, I like to poke, poke uh, holes in whatever, you know, the, the fields or the trends are going towards and see if there's some way to get some sort of 
differentiator. Sheets, what do you think about this range? Who are you heaviest on? Yeah, model, you know, model darlings just dominate this range and the ownership. You know, Matt Fitzpatrick rates the highest for me mm -hmm. um, of this range. And he's, and remember about managing expectations, right? If you, you have 7,500 guy, you don't need him to win, right? So mm -hmm. all these guys that are, look so super solid, I don't think either any of them have real winning upside, but they're good enough. Like, like Fitzpatrick, Connors, Henley, Casey, you know, they're, they're, they all look really, really good in the models. And to, to finish top 25 or 30, which is really all you need out of these guys. That's why these guys are getting owned. And I think it's fair enough. You know, I, it's, you know they're, they're, so, so I, I don't, I don't really mind any of those. One guy that's, that's uh, that you liked. Um, uh, I want to talk about two guys that you like Bobby that from the, from the early video, mm -hmm. one of them is actually showing up for me as a pretty good play. Um, and that's Max Homa um, at 7,100. Mm -hmm. Um uh, he's he's showing about you know ten percent or something like that, but certainly that's certainly lower than these other guys. Um, so there's that, and then then we'll get to the, your your other guy in a second. But I also like Cam Young all the way down to seven k. Um, I like that, but it's for me it's hard to dispute freaking what Fleetwood's been doing, you know. Um, and if people are just gonna just never play him, <laughs> as you would say, yeah. Um, you 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 could you could sign me up for that. Yeah, I'm on the, I'm uh, completely on the Fleetwood train and people who all, you know, because he doesn't win a tournament, they're like, oh, but Fleetwood killed you again. I'm like, well, all he does is finish in the top 20 every time and he doesn't care how tough the field is and he has no problem playing in weather. Uh, he's the one I'm heaviest on in this middle range and Homa's the one I'm heaviest on in the low range. I do like Siwoo and I like McIntyre and Cam Young. So I'm, and, and I even have some love for Luke List. So that whole 7K and then the 7600s, uh, 76 and 7700s, I'm not touching anybody else basically in this range as of right now. I might mix in some of the guys I mentioned, like Webb, um, maybe a Patrick Reed or something. It might end up in one tournament lineup or something. But I'm mostly just staying at the exact at 7K and 71 and 76 and 77. And I will be mixing in all those guys as my current. Oh, I uh, didn't even hadn't scrolled down far enough on my screen and oh. forgot to mention that I will be also uh, playing some Bobby Mac this week. Robert yeah, there, now that's that's the Kenny take I want to hear. <laughs> I don't want to hear any. Uh, I think I think I, I think it's a great play. Yeah, it's a great play. He's you know he he can fit into any lineup. Um, you know he's got the approach game and the around the green game. Um, he's got a uh, you know early morning tea time on Friday. Um, I think he's you know he's he can definitely put up some points uh, and and not only make the cut but have a good look going into Saturday. And, and this is, you know, this is why I'm stressing this is because if the winds do get violent on Friday and, and people start spraying things all over the place and not hitting greens, um, the guys who put up a score Friday morning, mm -hmm. you know, let's say they get to minus three, minus four or something like that. If the field drops to plus, you know, two or three, the, the guys who shot two under on Friday are going to be sitting real pretty. Um, and you know, then it's kind of fair game for the rest of the weekend. So, um, that is really a huge part of my core strategy this week is, uh, trying to get guys on the cheaper side that have, uh, preferable tea times. Yep. Yeah. It makes sense. Don't forget the other thing about, the about McIntyre is he does have that lefty vig. Um, right. Right. Which is, which is pretty big. Yep. Absolutely. They, I mean, even the even the 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 so-called golf experts that are friends of mine or people I know and everybody I've heard talk about it, the lefty thing is is a very real thing. This is not a made-up narrative, apparently. Um, which it sounded at first, it was like it's getting too much stuff, and I was like, no, nah, but you know, I guess it's a real thing. All and right. that's a, that's the other. Uh, just going back to your uh, in the ten k range, Bobby, just to make a comment because I, I yeah. forgot to mention it earlier. When you're talking about Morikawa, that's part of the problem that um, you know a lot of the people are saying with Morikawa is he just has a really hard time hitting a draw. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a righty, you need to be able to hit a draw in this course, and that's why it's so preferable for you know for lefties to play it is because there's a lot of uh, you know right to left shots where you're shape, right. shaping the shot, you know, hit the ball to the left. And uh, you know that uh, that's why I like Bobby Mack, and that's why I'm going to be off off of Morikawa this week. I like and I appreciate that. That's good. That's good info. Um, all right, uh, Sheets, why don't you start off with the 6K range? Uh, who, if anybody, are you playing? Because I usually have, usually have a couple guys down here. Yeah, the same two guys I had in the early thing. And uh, I'm, real, I'm, really get, I'm really into the Gary Woodland play. 
Um, yeah. I, I like him. I like it a lot. He's got distance. He's coming into form. He's low owned. I mean, it's just everything you want. Um, and then the guy who just just keeps showing up for me, and is also going to looks like he's going to be low owned. Is I guess is Thomas Peters. So same guys from the from 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 noon from excuse me from from last week from you know uh, the middle of the week, and really not much else. I guess the next guy, if I had to throw a third, would be Harold Barner. Mm -hmm. Kenny, how about you in this in this six uh, K range? Uh, sheets. I'm a hundred percent on board with every single one of those. Same and. Uh, I would just add in uh, Kevin Na. I'll be targeting this week, oh, okay. and uh, I don't care that he's not long off the tee. You know that that is a great thing to have here, as we all know. But it's not necessary. Um, I can't remember who it was. I was listening to another podcast, and someone had made a comment that some former winner of the masters had made, you know, won the masters without making a single Eagle. So, you know, you can definitely win this tournament if you're uh, you know, you, you play a smart game. Now I know he's not going to be the best for maybe point scoring uh, for fantasy points, but I do think that he has a good chance at, um, you know, placing well in the tournament, which is also obviously important. Mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, Tom Hoagie. Uh, I like this week in, 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 in this course and just, you know, in the field. And he also has, um, you know, early Friday tea time. So he'll be part of my cheap core. Yeah. I, I, I basically don't want to sound like a broken record or like, well, I guess us all sounding like the other, but like, I, I'm very much on the same page as you guys, basically with everything that you said, like, um, I don't, I don't, I didn't know if I, maybe I missed it, but I didn't hear Brian Harmon and I do have love for Brian Harmon this week. Another one of the guys who's not long off the tee is a lefty, but is good around the greens. And I expect to have a decent week here. Um, I think that Hoagie was maybe a little higher than him for me, but I, I think Peters, Woodland, uh, Hoagie Harmon is probably my favorite four, but I don't mind getting a little Bezaden Hoot or Sepp Straka. Um, are the other ones I'm going to include in you guys know me I like to force in the 6k guys because I just feel like every tournament we get a couple guys who are in the top 10 in the 6k range and they're on every winning like lineup in the giant field tournaments so I want to get a little bit of extra exposure even though it's not as great of a range as it usually I don't like it as much as I usually do because of how the strength of the other ranges the one weird guy I'm going to say on top of all this is Stuart Sink um, at 6400 I don't think he's actually like I've heard a couple of very smart people make some cases for him this week if you want to get different with your lineups. And uh, my one very, very, or my two very bizarre plays are KH Lee and uh, uh, obviously Matt Wolf. I'm going to throw into some lineups because I hate myself, but that's uh, that's where I'm at. So let's quickly uh, go through the game. Kenny, you get to oh, start. Before, before, before we do that, um, okay. I, I find it interesting that we went through the entire slate without we only gave like like three seconds to really the the, the big story of of the year oh tiger yeah so what do, what are you what are you doing with that I, my plan was to be well above the field and play like 15 to 20 percent when i thought he was gonna be five percent now that he's 10 to 12 percent or somewhere in that range based on which thing you're looking at i'm a little less interested but i probably am gonna take some shots so i don't know right now i'm I hate to be with the field. So I'm probably going to try and find a way to, to depending on what I really think his ownership is going to be like, maybe in the large field stuff, he's going to be a little more popular. I think in the single entry high buy-in, he'll be a little less popular. That's so I might play him in those tournaments. That's sort of the way I'm approaching it. Yeah. yeah similar to me. I'm going to, uh, you know, maybe take a couple shots with him in some single entries and then, um, you know, if Saberson piles them into some lineups, then, then they do. Then if they don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. Cheech, what are you doing with him? I'm not playing. <laughs> no, Cheech is never going to do that situation. <laughs> oh, I knew you were going to say that. But uh, it's hard. You know, I like the guys around him, too. And also, you're getting Sung JM, you know, at what? Third the ownership of him? That seems a little little crazy in his first tournament back. But at the same time, I'm pumped to see Sat Tiger. And, and it would be really painful to me if he, like, is well, in attention. And I don't have him in anything. Well, what's interesting also about the Tiger thing is I don't know why. why I don't know why this is a big deal, but when I said that I was going to play, uh, when I was going to play outright on Neiman and Discord, everybody was on me. He's like, "How can you play him? He's in Tiger's group." That's fine. I mean, I think I'll, that's better for Neiman to be 
Um, Absolutely. I think it's, it's, I mean, it's more of a motivator, you know? I mean, this is like, it's like, what, what, happened, what it's happened at Tiger's like, tournament? What happened at Tiger's, at Tiger's home tournament? Guess who won it? This is right. like, this is you like passing I mean? of the, like, yeah, but there's, you got exactly. passing of the torch, you got passing of the torch narratives. I mean, you yeah. got, you got all kinds of stuff and you know, you know what? I, I want to be with the guy who's, who knows the course better than everybody else. You know, no offense. Absolutely. I totally agree. Especially because, you know, I, I, I'd assume we're expecting Tiger to be longer off the team than Neiman. So, uh, you know, when it comes to um, some of the like game strategy and stuff, Neiman's going to have to, you know, he's going to be wanting to play real smart because he's not going to want to, you know, lose his group to Tiger. He's going to want to have a chance at beating Tiger in a round. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you got, yeah, you got the guy who knows the course the best. And I, I'm on board with all of this stuff. Um, all right, Kenny, let's go, let's go to it real quick. Okay. So start off with the, who's going to win the tournament, Kenny? Uh, for me, it's one of two guys and it's hard. Um, I'm going to say Cam Smith. Ooh, I like it. Cheats. Uh, the wins all the money, Patrick Cameron. All right. I'm going with John Rahm. Um, broken record over here. Again, I always pick John Rahm. Uh, 9K range to top five. Uh, Kenny, start us off. Uh, other, than take, other than Cantlay, I will it, it, take. It, it could be, no, other than Cam Smith. It can be blown out. Other than Cam Smith. Uh, I'll go with Brooks. Okay. I like that. Um, I am going to, uh, um, hmm. so many obvious choices. I would have taken Cam Smith. Be, uh, you know, I'm just going to say Sam Burns before you guys get in the 8K range. So I'll say Sam Burns, the top five. God damn. It. Um, all right. I'll go, uh, I'll go Xander. Sheets is going Xander. All right. Sheets, now you start us off with the 8K range to top 10. Terrell Hatton. Love it. Kenny? Uh, Neiman. All right, I will take Adam Scott. Um, 7K range to top 20. Sheets? Um, I'll go Fitzpatrick. All right, Kenny? I'll go Fleetwood. You can't take my guy from me. You just did that to me because I took the same <laughs> version. Hey, this is, hey, dude, this is, yep. this, is Amer- this is America. He can do whatever he wants. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, then you know what? Then I can do what I want. I'll take Fleetwood also. How about that? Go for it. Double Fleetwood. <laughs> um, all right, let's go with the under 7K range to make the cut, which should be not as hard this week because we only have 50, 50 guys and basically only eight, or 80, 100 golfers, only 85 of them can actually make the cut probably. Um, Sheets, who are you taking uh, under 7K to make it? Gary Woodland. God damn it. Kenny. All right. That was my pick. I'll take uh, Hoagie. And I will take Thomas Peters. All right, guys. Well, wait, wait, no, wait. The, oh, the, oh, the 9K guy to, uh, to, to miss the cut. That's impossible okay. to miss. Okay. Miss the impossible to miss cut. Kenny, who are you taking at 9K plus? 9K plus to miss the cut. Uh... Bryson. That's all right. I like that's who I would that's who I'm gonna take as well. Sheets, go ahead. <laughs> um I'm still st- I'm, I'm gonna stick with the same guy I had earlier in the but week. I'm, I'm just I'm just so okay. steamed that 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 he choked when I needed him. So so I'll take Mark Howard and Mr. Cut. Oh I, I'm gonna I'm gonna also back it up with uh equally likely uh Hideki withdraw. Ooh. But that has to happen after the, the lock, okay? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I will take. I. I. You know. Oddly enough, as the, the guy who I make the biggest case for, because but you are you actually did already take Bryce, so I want to take another guy. I do think Hideki, because of the injury, you can make an excuse as the next most likely to. The guy just doesn't really miss cuts when he's ever he's healthy, but he did miss last week when he wasn't. So, we'll see. Um. Anyway. Right, wait. Wait. So we we gotta have some action here. So I'll did. bet each of you one dollar because I'm I'm a big gambler here. I will take, I'll take, if you want, I'll take Xander straight up against Cam Smith. Okay. I don't think you're taking any, like, I think those are, those are basically probably projected about the same, right? Well, I don't know. One's 9,600, one's 9,900. You guys like Cam Smith? I don't, I don't know. 
All right, all right. You don't like oh, you don't like that. All right, somebody don't want. And, and okay, well, I'll, I'll make my other prediction that Xander is more popular than Cam Smith by the time that the slate's lost. No long. chance. Regardless no of chance. what they say. No, I I think I think you're she's okay. There's our dollar. Well, I will. Well, I will say this. There's you're our right. In, you're right. You're right. You're right with respect to one thing. Xander is always more popular than he projects. He's always more popular, and Cam Smith is. You know what? Cam Smith was supposed to be on that tournament when we made the run. He was You're supposed right. to be on 20%. You know what he ended up? 6%. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen again, in my opinion. If he's stuck in that weird 9,900 range, I it's don't true. think we're going to click the button when it actually comes to it. It's true. Um, that's my take. They'll, fi- they'll find the 100 for Rory. Exactly. Or they'll find the whatever, the 400 for JT. All right, guys. Appreciate everything. Uh, guys, let's hopefully have a big week. Hopefully we'll be talking about how we each made a million dollars in different tournaments somehow uh, let's on, go. on Monday. <laughs> and uh, let's freaking go. Thanks a lot, guys. Great job.